Hey guys, so this is a question that a lot of different dentists get. I've had this question asked to me multiple times, and a lot of people have very different opinions on it. The question is, why would you put fluoride in your drinking water? And the reason people put fluoride in the drinking water is to prevent cavities. But here's the confusing part. Why do I have to drink the fluoride when the cavities are all in my teeth. So the theory of adding fluoride to the drinking water actually didn't start until the early 1900s. And it wasn't until 1901 when fluoride actually started getting researched. Now these guys did their time doing their research and what they found is people who had more exposure to this fluoride ended up having less cavities. It's kind of weird, right? So eventually they decided to do a study where they would put fluoride in people's drinking water and see if that area would start to get less cavities. And it wasn't until 1945 when the city called Grand Rapids, a city in Michigan, became the first city to ever fluoridate their drinking water. Now this was a big project. It was actually going on for 15 years. And they ended up looking at about 30,000 school children during this time. And what they found is people who were born after this fluoride was added had about 60% less cavities. Now you can imagine that's a pretty big deal because before this point, there was really no way to prevent cavities for a lot of people. And even now, cavities are such a problem in a lot of different areas. But before the fluoride was added, cavities were way worse. And it was so rampant that a lot of people thought it was just this uncontrollable disease. And it was so bad that before any of these modern dental techniques started taking place, a lot of people actually died from dental infections because these cavities will start off really small, but they'll only get bigger and bigger. And if they get big enough, they'll cause an infection. And if that infection isn't treated, that infection will get bigger and bigger, and eventually it can even kill you. So that was just a little backstory, but you can see why this was such a big deal, because adding this one mineral to people's drinking water made such a big difference. Now let's get back to the main question. Is it safe? You know, a lot of people say that you're adding this toxic chemical that can have all these damaging effects to my drinking water. Now, first of all, fluoride is a natural mineral. It's actually found on rocks. And if you go outside right now and lick some rocks, you're probably gonna get some fluoride in you. Now, I'm not telling you to go do that. I'm just helping you show that it's a natural thing in our earth. And also, fluoride is naturally in our drinking water. The government doesn't have to add fluoride for you to get it. If you go to a lot of different bodies of water, there's already gonna be some fluoride in there. And also, if you're really scared of fluoride and you don't wanna eat any of it, you also shouldn't be eating shellfish or any meat or any cheese because all of those things have fluoride too. So right now the recommended amount of fluoride in our drinking water is about 0.7 milligrams per liter. Now that number may vary state to state in the United States, but generally it will be close to there. Now at that level, there have been no studies showing any detrimental effect of ingesting fluoride. And there have been a lot of high quality studies that are supporting this. And these studies have been going on for many years. And actually in all of the studies, the only thing that I've ever seen is you might get a mild fluorosis. So fluorosis is basically some stains you can get on your teeth when you have fluoride as your teeth are developing. So your teeth are gonna be developing until you're about eight years old. At that point, your teeth are pretty much done developing even though they haven't all come in your mouth yet. But what can happen is if you're ingesting this fluoride before the age of eight, you can get these mild fluorosis stains on your teeth. And these are basically these white spots that you'll see on some teeth. Now these can be really hard to see, and a lot of times only your dentist can see it. But other than the fact that they stain the teeth a little bit, there's no harmful effect on the teeth. The teeth don't get any weaker, they're not any more prone to cavities, and in fact they're actually stronger than a tooth would be if it didn't have any fluoride. Now you might be wondering, like I've seen some crazy pictures online where these teeth are all mottled or super brown and they have these crazy pits in them, and that's the fluorosis that I've seen. I don't know what mild fluorosis you're talking about. Well those severe stains of fluorosis cannot happen with the drinking water in the United States if it's regulated and it is regulated. So those pictures from those severe cases of fluorosis are most likely gonna be from other countries that do not have as much regulation of fluoride. For example, one common country is India, where a lot of these pictures have circulated. Or you can get those severe cases of fluorosis from not watching your kids. If you're not watching your kids and they keep eating toothpaste, or they start eating these fluoride tablets, then yeah, they're gonna have more fluoride and that's gonna cause a more severe form of this fluorosis. But from the drinking water alone, it's not gonna cause any of this. And another common argument I hear is, why do toothpaste have a warning label on them then? If fluoride is so safe, 
then how come I can't eat my toothpaste? Well, you gotta understand that the fluoride content in your toothpaste is about a thousand times more than the fluoride content in your drinking water. But even with that higher concentration of fluoride, it still seems like there's not enough to cause a serious health effect if you do ingest it. The ADA even said that a child cannot absorb enough of the fluoride from eating toothpaste to cause serious health effects. But those warning labels are still gonna be there to be extra precautious because obviously, yeah, you should not be eating that much fluoride. That's why it's regulated so much in the drinking water and that's why the warning labels are on the toothpaste because the toothpaste you're supposed to spit out. You're not supposed to eat it. Now, another common argument I hear is in Europe, they reject water fluoridation. How come other countries in Europe or other parts of the world are rejecting fluoride and they're not putting in the drinking water, but in the United States they are? There has to be something else wrong with that, right? Well, you gotta look more into it because in Europe, there are other ways that people get fluoride other than just the drinking water. For example, a big one is salt fluoridation. So instead of putting fluoride in the drinking water, they actually put it in salt. And that's how people get exposed to fluoride. And actually in Europe alone, at least 70 million people are consuming this fluoridated salt. And if you look in the data in those cities that have fluoridated salt or fluoridated water versus areas that do not have fluoride, you'll see a lot less incidence of cavities when they are exposed to the fluoride. Now you might also see studies that fluoride will lower your IQ, but you wanna make sure that you're looking at high quality studies. So all of the studies that are supporting fluoride and saying that it's safe are the highest possible level of evidence out there. But a lot of these studies that I'm seeing that are saying that fluoride will, for example, lower your IQ, they're all correlational data. So for example, you can look at a study and say that this population has a very low IQ and this population is also exposed to fluoride. So therefore, the fluoride is causing them to be stupid. But also if you look at that population, you might also find that they never go to school they never bother to learn how to read. They never try to educate themselves. So you see what I'm saying? There's a lot of different reasons that that population may have a lower IQ. It's like saying if people have more ashtrays in their house, they're more likely to die from lung cancer. Obviously, if people have an ashtray in their house, it's because they're smoking and that smoking is gonna be causing the lung cancer. But if you look at the correlation, you see more ashtrays means more lung cancer. Therefore, the ashtrays are causing the lung cancer. You can see now why that correlational data does not work and why you cannot use it. Now, why does fluoride help your teeth so much? And why is it so important in preventing cavities? Well, the reason is when fluoride gets in contact with your teeth, it actually remineralizes your teeth. So here's the way fluoride works. So here's a brief diagram of your tooth. So you have your enamel on the outside. On the inside of that, you have your dentin. And then this is your pulp or basically the blood supply and the nerve supply and what's keeping your tooth alive. So on the outside here, your enamel, that's what I wanna focus on because that's what fluoride is actually strengthening. So normally your enamel is made up of these hydroxyapatite crystals. So I didn't make that name, but just know that these are the crystals that are making up your tooth enamel. And this is the molecule all written out and you don't really have to look at that, that's not super important. But basically what happens is when these fluoride ions get in contact with your tooth, they start to remineralize your enamel. And they turn these hydroxyapatite crystals into something else. So these ions will get swapped out with these fluoride ions. So now instead of being called hydroxyapatite, it now turns into fluorapatite. So you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Why would I wanna change these crystals into a different crystal? Well, the reason is these crystals are a lot more compact. They are holding together a lot tighter than these hydroxyapatite crystals. Now, the way cavities form is you have these bacteria that are in your mouth and on your teeth. And when you eat sugar, these bacteria will eat these sugars and they'll secrete these acids as byproducts. And these acids will slowly start to dissolve your teeth and they'll eventually cause holes. And these holes are what's called cavities. Now, when you have these crystals super tight together, like when it's called fluorapatite, it's a lot harder for that enamel to dissolve in response to that acid. So those teeth are in effect a lot stronger and a lot more resistant to getting cavities. And that's what makes such a big difference here. That's why fluoride is so important because it can really strengthen your teeth and really prevent getting cavities. Now you might be wondering like, aren't I getting enough fluoride from my toothpaste already? 
why do I need to have more fluoride in my drinking water? Do I really need that? Well, the answer is for a lot of people, yeah, you don't need fluoride in your drinking water. And if you're doing all the right things, you might be fine without having fluoride in your drinking water. But also for a lot of other people, they will not be fine and they'll be way more likely to get cavities. And there could be a variety of reasons. It could just be their diet where they're exposed to more acids. It could be they're just not brushing as well or they're not brushing enough. There's a lot of different reasons that someone would be more likely to get cavities than someone else. Now, that being said, there are ways to get rid of fluoride. So there's different filters out there that can actually filter out the fluoride from your drinking water. I personally don't do that. I don't see the need for it. But if you want to do that, go for it. Just know that if you do that, you're going to be at a higher risk of getting cavities. And also, if you do not trust the government to regulate the drinking water or the levels of fluoride in the drinking water, there are simple tests you can get. And they can just test the drinking water and see how much fluoride's in it. And those are really cheap. I think you can get them on Amazon or something like that. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned a little bit more about the backstory of fluoride and why it was added to drinking water in the first place and how it actually helps prevent cavities. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below. And I will see you guys in the next video.